See the cat? The cat wants to take over the channel. Come here. You can stay in my lap if you want to. Are you going? See what Chaplin wants to do in a minute, guys, before we start. He doesn't even know what's going on, mate. First of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room, which is, okay, off you go. Nails on me! The elephant in the room is this hat. What are we thinking about the hat? Because I bought this, like, impulse buy on ASOS, and I really don't know. I showed it to my mum, and she was like, yeah. This week, I really just wanted to talk about my struggles and some of your struggles as well. So this video idea kind of popped into my head after one of the worst weeks I've ever had, just in terms of like mental health and kind of just having a shitty week, you know what I mean? Basically, let me just set up the context. All of last week, I had my period and it was a horrendous period. It's always a horrendous period, but I'm in the middle of trying like another pill. I know I said I would never do that again, but I have my reasons. Anyway, in the middle of trying another pill and I don't know if, I don't know, I don't know what's going on with it like do you know what i mean feeling out of control and feeling like i don't have my shit together and for me someone who likes to really be in control of everything in her life that was really difficult as a lot of you know i struggle a lot with binge eating and i have a history of eating disorders from when i was younger but this week has been really bad all of a sudden my period came and it just messed everything up oh my god i really feel for us women sometimes because it's like non-stop i have personally two weeks of feeling like myself hey i'm dina i'm productive i'm getting things done or even if i'm not getting things done just feeling good then i have one week pre-period which is i'm just turned into a monster and then i have the period week which is obviously the week that you're bleeding and you that's just shit anyway, isn't it? And then there are a few days after that where you're kind of balancing out again, but in general, that's how the month goes and like people around me only get two weeks of decent human being. Do you know what I mean? I decided I'm gonna write down everything I'm struggling with and talk about it in a video. And then I asked you guys today on Instagram what you're struggling with, just to see if there's anything similar. And it turns out we're all struggling with the same kind of thing. One of the main things I'm struggling with right now is my mind is constant. I was talking about this with Sid the other day. I said to him, you know when I ask you what you're thinking about, because you look like you're thinking of something, and you say to me, nothing, and I'm like, yeah, but obviously you're thinking about something, like, what are you thinking about? And then I basically accuse him of lying, because I'm like, there's gotta be something in your head. Like, what is quiet in someone's head? Is that, who here, please let me know below, who is ever super quiet? Like. I, I can't even imagine what it's like to have nothing going on in your head because from the minute I wake up, I have about a billion thoughts. Yet I can't focus on any of the thoughts. So even now, as I'm talking to you guys, and I should be concentrating on this video, I have other things in my head that just keep popping in and out. I don't know, I feel like maybe that's why I go off track in a lot of my videos. Some of you guys who have watched me for years and years have noticed that I really go off track and I start rambling on and on. For a long time it's even like a billion thoughts but then there's always music going on as well when i'm reading quran or if i've listened to quran it'll be quran playing in the back of my head it's literally whatever has been stuck in my head recently or whatever the last thing i heard was whether it's quran or music it's doing my head in because i'm trying to think of something else it sounds haram to say that but it just makes your brain constantly working and therefore not able to focus on one thing i'm also a very very inconsistent person a lot of you guys have said in anger to me as well, especially here on YouTube, Dina, you say you're going to do one thing and then you start it and then you fall off after a week or you say you're going to do something and you never get around to doing it. Even though I genuinely am meaning to do it and even though if I plan or do all the steps that I need to do it, I end up just not doing it and I have no idea why because it's not lazy. I know I'm not lazy, like bro, I'm up at 5am. I'm not lazy, I'm up at 5am and I'm not just sitting on my phone and hanging out. I'm up at 5am and I'm doing the things. I'm literally just like doing the steps of life. So I wake up, wait for the kids to wake up. While I'm waiting for them, I'll do the washing or I'll do the school lunchbox, get their breakfast ready. And then I'll walk past something that needs picking up and I'll think to myself, I'll pick that up in a minute and then I'll forget until like the week later. Now, I've had this thing for years as well, which I think I'm paranoid. Or people tell me I'm paranoid and I always thought, well, I definitely get that from my mum because my mum is 
I've always known her to be super paranoid. But now I'm starting, as I'm reading into things, I'm starting to think it's not paranoia, we just overthink things a lot. I overthink everything to the point that it either makes me not do it or it gives me just crazy anxiety and I'm like constantly planning for scenarios that most likely will never happen. Does that make any sense? And I'm just thinking it's the same with my mom. she's just an overthinker. If it's something to do with the kids and I'll be like, hey, that's dangerous, even though it seems so normal. It's because I've already thought ahead to what may happen and what, what steps we would need to take if that did happen. My brain is just working in the future of something that potentially would never happen. I don't even know how to explain it. Another thing I really, 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 really struggle with that you guys may have picked up on in a lot of the relationship videos that me and Sid do when we talk about our own relationship. We've talked about love languages before and Sid is a very touchy-feely kind of guy. He loves hugs and showing affection in that way. Whereas I like to do things for people. And now I'm understanding that actually, it's not that I'm not an affectionate person because I am, but I have sensory issues with touch and sound. Not really so much of smell, to be honest with you, but touch is a big one for me. It seems to me a lot of these things that I'm struggling with, as I'm getting older, is getting worse. And I always used to think, oh, it's just a phase I'm going through is because I'm burnt out or, you know, I've got too much on my plate or whatever. And I'll, I'll get through this phase, but every year is passing and it's just not, in fact, it's just getting worse. So I started looking into it. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see I shared a lot of information on ADHD in women. In particular, women who have been diagnosed late. And I don't know if I have ADHD. All the YouTube like medical people that don't like people who self-diagnose, sometimes you kind of have to take things into your own hand because especially with COVID nowadays, it's quite hard to get seen. I mean, I've had a list of tabs open on my laptop for about a month now about how to get started. Try and get a diagnosis from a doctor to see if I have ADHD or another variation like ADD or something like that. I don't know, every time I go on it, I'm like, yeah, I'll do that in a minute and then no, I never get around to doing it. If I ever do get around to doing that, I'll obviously I'll update you. So I'm just putting this out there. I'm not saying I have ADHD. However, reading a lot of the symptoms and talking to a lot of people online, women who do have it and were diagnosed later, a lot of the things I go through really it would make sense to me if i had it it would explain a lot of the things if it isn't that then it does just mean i'm burnt out and i need to just like chill or i just need to focus more i don't know like sis is always telling me just focus on this and i'm like i'm really trying but bro i just can't like i actually just can't sometimes he's talking to me about let's say we've got some work thing and i'm just looking at him and I'm like yeah and like, in my head all i'm thinking of is i hope he thinks i'm listening but i genuinely after like what, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds of the talk, I fully, fully, not even zoned out, just my mind has just been distracted by, I don't know, something in my peripheral vision or a thought that's popped up. Oh, I don't even know, it's exhausting. That is all I know. Currently, how I'm functioning is absolutely exhausting. Off the back of that, I'm losing concentration when people are talking to me. I didn't realize that that was a thing I did until recently because I've always just thought I'm quite quirky. Like when people talk to me, I don't know, but I just have like this urge in me that makes me just want to butt in. Like it takes everything in me to just fully think and I'm just listening to you and I'm just thinking, don't interrupt, don't interrupt. Don't wait till it's your moment to reply. Yep, okay, reply now. I'll ask Sid a question in the morning and I won't even wait for his answer. I'll just carry on, carry on with whatever I was doing. Then I'll come back in the room literally a minute later and ask him again. And wallahi, I'll do this like five to ten times within the hour. Until he snaps back quite rude and then I'm like, why are you being so rude, bro? And then we have an argument. I genuinely just didn't hear what he said. Or I heard it but I didn't. It didn't, didn't go in. I just can't get my shit together. And I always put it down to it's since I've had kids because I'm just too busy, it's just mum life. But now I'm like relating things to when I was younger, even like my whole education journey. In high school, I did absolutely fine. I was smart, I wasn't super smart, but I had good grades. I, was, I felt like I was smart too. I felt like academically I couldn't, I could just never revise for an exam. Like revision never happened for me, like that's just not a thing. Yeah, we revised, we would go to the library and just mess about and I'd get highlighter pens and just in the end it turned into like an art piece. When it came to like A-levels, skills really were not reflected in my result, I think. I managed to get into uni. I've been to three different unis and I've tried three different courses. 
but for some reason I could never stick to any of them. Even though in the end I spent the same amount of time in university as you would to get a degree. I ended up with no degree because I was just constantly losing interest. And when I was working, it was always like working in retail, then jumping from one call centre to another. Like I could never just stay in a call centre even and then just like work my way up like a lot of people can. So I feel like I got really lucky with what my career was in the end, which is kind of a bunch of random stuff like this as well. Sometimes I sit and I think, what would I do if I wasn't doing this? If I wasn't lucky enough to manage my work and make an, in and make an income from it, what would I be doing? What would I be doing? And only recently have I thought to myself, oh, maybe I'd do something in fitness because I really enjoy fitness. And I really, really love when people want to learn about something that I know about. I'm really enthusiastic about helping other people do things that I know about. I mean, not that I know about it, but let's say somebody's just started, then I can kind of help. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm trying not to overthink this video because the last video I uploaded really was a nightmare to edit because of me going back and forth with different topics and trying to keep it so that you guys can understand what I'm saying. A lot of you comment just saying, this video was all over the place. One minute you're thinking about this, one minute you're thinking about that, I can't keep up. And that's quite sad, but life admin. And what I mean when I say life admin is dealing with bills, letters that come through the post, things like mortgages, understanding adult stuff. I'm mad I'm saying this because I'm 32. When you put the kids to bed or when, you, when you're just done with your day, it's time for you now to chill. Chilling for me would be, you know, sitting down and watching my favourite programmes, that kind of thing. Or scrolling through TikTok, something like that. What I've noticed is I go to watch my programme and I can't sit there and watch it without having a break, like a phone break after five minutes or after 10 minutes. I'll think of something like, oh, I need to quickly go do that. Then I'll go quickly do that. Then I'll come back and watch it. So it's like an hour long program. And in the end, I've taken maybe like two and a half hours to watch the one. Either that or I fall asleep. Who's that miss calling me now? See, I've had this miss call from this number, which I know is, a, is an important business or something. I've just been avoiding answering it because it's given me anxiety, like I don't want to answer the phone. That's a massive thing I struggle with, answering the phone. I just can't. First of all, I don't have phone conversations anyway. Unless it's FaceTime with my family, that's different. So this is another big one, which doesn't seem that big, but it actually affects family life. And it is me dealing with control, I suppose. And it's control over the tiniest things. So for example, if like there's a ping pong ball underneath the shelf, right now to my right and it's driving me nuts it's been driving me nuts for weeks but i just haven't picked it up why haven't i picked that shit up it's so annoying and even now i know i'm not gonna pick it up i'm just gonna keep it there but back to my point if the kids make a mess and i'm watching them make a mess but it's just it's fun mess it's like they're getting their toys out they're having fun my heart starts beating faster i'm like oh my god they're making a mess oh my god but it, but then i'm also battling with the thought of like it's fine because they're playing and they're having fun this is what kids do or they're not making the right kind of mess and I have this thing as well, once a mess is made, once we're done with that activity, we need to tidy it up straight away. Let's say I make coffee or a bottle of porridge. As soon as I'm done with it, I go to the sink and I clean it out straight away. Otherwise, I won't get around to doing it. A good example of this, we've always had a dishwasher, but we've never used it or I've never used it because I'm just like, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example. On Christmas day, Tusi used the dishwasher while she was over. And I helped her do it and I was like, yeah, good idea because there's loads of dishes because there's loads of people here. Let's use the dishwasher. Save my hands, for God's sake. And then for about three weeks after that, me and Sid noticed that there were no forks in the house. We were like, where have all our forks gone? I don't understand. Has someone been stealing our forks? This is a serious concern now. And anyone who came over, we were like, did you borrow some forks? Have you got our forks? Did you forget to tell us that you took some forks? Everyone was looking at us like, no. Anyway, three weeks later, suddenly I just had a thought. I was like, oh my God, they're in the dishwasher. And that's why I don't use the dishwasher because if I can't see it, I'm never gonna remember it. That's why I don't wear half my clothes. Like if I take you upstairs, you'll be really shocked at actually how messy my room is. All the clothes that I'm currently wearing throughout the week, like my I Like Me sets, are kind of just like on the bench with a bunch of jackets that I'm wearing. It's just literally just like one big pile. And anything that's in the wardrobes is just not it's just not getting touched for some reason. But I'm sure a lot of you can relate. A lot of you guys clicking on this video probably thought you were gonna get some juice, some tea, you know, like major things Dina's struggling with. But no, I'm just being real here. These are like daily small things. Things that make it quite hard for you to seem, to feel like you're progressing. Does that make sense? Also, another thing is housework. 
over the years, I've definitely found keeping up with housework, which basically goes back to life admin, I have found it almost impossible to continue. And I have tried having a cleaner. If I'm gonna have somebody who like comes to help me with the house, like I just feel like they really need to get to know us properly. It would be great if they could help with tidying and putting things away. I am gonna pick up that ping pong ball today. I am, because just looking at me. Having really, really amazing ideas, like groundbreaking ideas that you know you're capable of doing, but never, ever, ever getting around to doing them, ever, ever. I'm talking years now. What's that about? I, the amount of good ideas I've had in my lifetime. Like if they'd actually happened, I would definitely be a billionaire. 100% right, do you know what I mean? <laughs> if we talk about parenting now or mum life, how many of you find it super difficult to play with your kids knowing how to play with my kids or what to do with them to keep them entertained. I actually never struggled with this until recently. When they were little or when with my first kid with Hannah, I found that I was actually a great mum. I am still a great mum but I was definitely better when she was younger. And same with Mika. I mean in my head I know what to do with them, like I know what we should be doing together. But it's just hard to do it sometimes and it's hard to get yourself to spend really good quality time with your kids and be present in the moment. So a really good way to tackle that is just to think to yourself, you know what, I'm putting a stopwatch on or I'm just going to mentally take a note of the time and I am going to fully concentrate and do a really quality activity. Quality meaning could mean anything by the way, it could be reading books or it could be something like just colouring together or drawing together, which is one that I really love to just resort to because it's so simple. And just think, I'm going to sit here for 20 minutes and talk to my child and engage with them and do the same activity as them. If that's all you can do, that 20 minutes is going to do them a world of good. It will really fill up their emotional needs or whatever it is that kids crave which obviously is to do with emotions. When I'm really struggling, I just think that, I just think, okay, 20 minutes on the clock. Hannah, do you want to do this with me? And I give her my all. Sometimes it runs over 20 minutes, sometimes it'll go into half an hour, one hour. If that happens, it's a bonus. If you are struggling though, you'd be like, okay, you carry on with that. I'm gonna start whatever, cooking now or whatever you're doing. And usually then they're fine to carry on, especially when they're young and they wanna do a lot of role play and loads of kind of, things that, you know, just not interested in as an adult, which is normal. Playing with your kids is actually a talent that is really underrated. And I know a lot of you will agree with me on that. We look after them, but do you actually play and do activities together? Did I say that I struggle with routine, but not routine? In fact, I thrive on routine, my own routine, but I find it difficult to make like a work routine and stick to it. I find that really hard. How many of you really struggle with relaxing or taking time to yourself, like proper time to yourself? You know when your partner's just like, just relax, and they're not saying it like horribly, like they just relax, they literally mean like, just you go relax, oh, I've got this. So then you go upstairs to relax, but you end up just doing a bunch of things. I can never relax. If there's a moment where everyone's doing their own thing, like the kids are on the iPad and Sid's just chilling out on his phone for a few minutes, I'll just be pacing the house, waiting for the next thing. So waiting for like, okay, now we're gonna spend time together or waiting like to serve dinner or, I'll just be pacing the house or I'll just be pacing waiting till bedtime. Still doing all the things, but I'll, I won't be able to just sit there and do nothing. I'll just find something to do, yet do nothing at the same time. A lot of you guys are gonna think, you know, this video is super negative, but I don't think it is. I think this video is me going through my 30s and really finally getting to the bottom of who I am and understanding what I'm like and who I am as a person, because that is a journey that I've only embarked on pretty much when I turned 30. All the years before that, you're still kind of growing as a person, then suddenly you get married, then suddenly you have kids, you haven't got time to sit and really know yourself. There's nothing negative about working on yourself. Even if you don't like the sound of it, doesn't mean this is negative, you know? Which brings me to the fact that some things online are just so flipping toxic and so unbelievably fake. And I have noticed that last year more than anything. People that I've met in real life and they are not like that online and it's just the biggest bullshit I've ever seen. Not toxic positive, well yeah, toxic positivity, but these people in real life honestly are the biggest assholes on the planet. Also leads me on to religious 
manipulation or religious abuse. And unfortunately, when you take control of your own life, people start thinking you've fallen off your religion or you're not as religious before or you're, you're no longer you know, part of the community, whatever. And that's quite sad because that tells me, oh, unless you're in control of um, people in your life, unless you're under that control and influence, then you're a bad person. And it usually happens when it's a woman. And I could talk about that all day, but that's for a whole other video. I feel like I would really need to articulate myself well, especially with the way my mind jumps from one topic to the other. There's nothing haram about having control of your own life, remember that. There's definitely something haram though in controlling other people's life and using religion as an excuse to control someone's life. Do you know how we're gonna end this video, guys? I'm gonna go on Instagram and I'm gonna have a look at the things that you are struggling with all anonymously, but we'll just read some out because maybe these could be topics of conversation that we can address maybe in another video. Oh, here's one, understanding religion. Actually, that's one thing I've really started to think about recently, understanding religion from a child's perspective, because obviously I have kids and I'm trying to teach them, or I'm really thinking about it now as Hannah has turned six and when she's seven, really want to start teaching her like properly, you know. Patience with my baby. Having patience with children and babies is another really, really, underrated thing and it's a really difficult thing to have but I always say this a child or a baby is much safer in their room or in their bed or in their crib alone than in the hands of a tired overwhelmed and impatient parent so if for whatever reason you are feeling like you're reaching your tether because your baby is screaming or your child is doing your head in simply walk out of the room sit down somewhere and take some moments to breathe it out. All the things that are playing in your head, like you wanna shout, you wanna scream, just walk out. It's the best thing you can do. Working out. I always say with working out, it's not a motivation thing anymore, it's just a discipline. Once you get to that stage, then you're good. You have to enjoy it, like you actually have to enjoy it. So maybe, like my sister-in-law has realized that she doesn't actually enjoy working out with weights a lot, but she really loves sports like she's a sportswoman. You know, it doesn't have to be the traditional what we see with fitness influencers, which can also be super, not toxic, but just super like overtaking the fitness industry, just like, oh, you have to go and you have to use the leg press machine, then you have to do your squats, then you have to do your deadlifts. And it just gets, I think it gets too much and a bit overwhelming, but also really, really flipping boring. Most people are just out here trying to be fit and healthy so that they find their day-to-day life and tasks easier you know that's why i wanted to get fit to help me with running around with my kids then from there other passions grew like i really enjoy kettlebells one of the reasons i enjoy kettlebells guys because the flow of kettlebells sometimes almost feels like you're dancing there's no prep for it i mean other than knowing your form and stuff you literally just pick up the kettlebell and it's a piece of equipment that's ready to use you really have to find something that you enjoy and there's nothing wrong if you feel like the regular gym stuff that you see online, you're not into. The stuff that we see on the mainstream gym fitness influencer is not the be all and end all. If you are starting your fitness journey, don't think that you have to start this fitness journey to change the way your body looks. You don't need to grow a bum. You don't have to want these things. I've had a few comments since starting my fitness journey saying things like, oh Dina, you haven't even got a bum and you've been lifting for how long? I'm not working on trying to have a big bum, like I don't care. However my body ends up looking is a bonus for the way that working out is making me feel. Spending quality time with kids rather than them watching TV. If you feel like the only thing you can do with your kids today is watch TV, then make it quality time. Get yourselves a bowl of popcorn, put on a movie and watch it with them. So don't sit there on your phone while the TV's on. Sit there and watch the movie with them. And the simplest way to be involved in that is talk through the movie with them. That's how you turn that into quality time. That's maybe an easier way to do it instead of, if you just can't bring yourself to like do an activity, then just do that. Sometimes we'll bring the duvets from upstairs and put them in the living room, just make it like a cozy den. There's literally like four in a row here of staying consistent. But I seem like I can't really help you because I'm struggling with it myself. I don't know how to stay consistent. You know, I wish even like I got my meals in check. Like there's something about cooking for me that just overwhelms the shit out of me. Because I can cook, I can cook, but it's the prep. So like going to the supermarket and getting all the things I need for the meals I might have planned for that week. I'm like, what? I can't focus on doing that bit and the prep. If I've been in the office all day, come back and I just have to look in the fridge and see what's there to cook. There's no chance I can figure out what to cook 
from just seeing what's in the fridge. Whereas Sid can come home, I'll be like, can you make something? And he'll be like, yeah, cool. He'll just open up the cupboards and see what we have and make something. Whereas in the morning in the office, I'll be like, what are we making for dinner today? Because I need to buy what we need, like what are we have. And I'm thinking about it all day because I can't just look and see what we have to use. Feeding your kids is one of the hardest things that nobody will talk about. It's so hard to get your kids to eat. It's so hard, man. And unfortunately, I know what I need to be doing and it's, I need to be making the good meals or I need to be presenting them the good meals and just leaving them to it after that. No pressure, because that's the last thing I want, giving them like an eating, you know, eating disorder where they're older because of me. But that's a really hard thing to break out of and I could be doing it subconsciously, you know? Not peeing my pants when I skip. So as you know, I love skipping. In fact, I've recorded a whole week's worth of my workouts on a period week. I get a lot of questions from mums about how the hell I skip after having two kids because you pee yourself when you jump. I'm very lucky that I don't have that issue. However, had I started jumping when Mika was one, I definitely would have had that issue. But you have to remember, I didn't start skipping until Mika was definitely like two and a half. No, Mika, until Mika was two. And even when I had started then, it wasn't like, oh my God, I'm gonna pee myself, but there was definitely a risk, like I could feel that risk. So I just always made sure there was I was fully empty so that nothing could come out. And most of the time I skipped in my garden. And sometimes I did accidentally do a little pee pee in my pants, but I was at home and in my garden, so it's fine. The first year that I worked out, the majority of it was at home because of a lockdown. There's loads of people online who have had kids and are fitness trainers and can really help with that. You just gotta search. Maybe one day I will be one of these people. I mean, do you know what guys? I love fitness, but I don't I don't know if I love it enough to get the qualifications I need. However, there is this thing um, where you can have a qualification in kettlebell training, which I'm looking at because I'm definitely interested enough in that. But then I don't think I can do much with it anyway because it's just me overthinking these again. But I really have to wrap up this video and I really hope you enjoyed it. And please continue some of these discussions below. The postman is here. I must go. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye. <laughs>